It seems sketchy across an open ocean, but the reliability of motors nowadays and the boats the way they are and the safety equipment that's available, you know, if you make the right preparations and have the right safety gear, there's no reason you can't easily make a crossing. You can't always rely on obtaining supplies when you go to the Bahamas. It takes some preparation. You know, it, after you make a trip a couple times, you realize what you need to bring, what you don't need to bring. Um, but you pretty much plan for everything. You have to think about the food that you need, the bait that you need, the tackle that you need. It's a lot of prep. I mean, it is a lot of prep. A buddy of mine, Cameron, comes over here, Cameron Kirkconnell, who dies, and we've done some stuff together. He comes over here a bunch and told me about this place. I had been here one time before, stopped to get fuel. I've never spent any time here. So as a destination that he spoke of so highly, it just all fell together. He helped me get accommodations. They were more than gracious to, to accommodate us here at Chub K Resort. And it just fell, fell together. We tried to come two weeks prior. Weather when it didn't allow it, it was too rough, but we had another weather window and conditions were good enough to go. I heard it was a first class destination. That's what I heard. I heard it was a great place to come. I heard the bill fishing is incredible in the pocket. The diving, you know, Buddy Cameron's been down here sending me pictures of giant lobster and hogfish and grouper. So I knew the diving was wonderful. I knew the fishing as a destination for billfish, especially this time of the year, starting to heat up for, for blue marlin. And the bonefish as well. It's one of the top bonefish destinations in the world. So it had everything to offer, you know, inshore, offshore, above water, and below water. idle out? Yeah, let's ride. Everything has to be brought in on ship here. Everything has to be brought by a barge. The fuel, the food, the water. So you got to imagine everything's going to cost that much more and there's not that much uh, available. You know, I've done this trip a ton of times with the, with the family, you know, and, and the kids and it's always a summer trip that we, we look forward to and go on. And then there's also the trip that you take with the boys. It's just a boys trip and it's hardcore, sun up, sun down, fishing. There's no sitting by the pool. There's no relaxing and, you know, taking in the sun. It's, it's fishing. And so you find those friends that are, that are hardcore fishermen, that are through and through. They may not have the experience at the offshore, but they're gung-ho about being on the boat all day long. So this area is really good on the east, southeast wind, pushes it all up against this bank. Everything gets shoved up against there, no place for the bait to go. No, this is this is where they this is where they are. And uh, if we had a little bit more south, we'd maybe work the, the northern side of it, but I feel a lot more confident as we push push down here and have some of that uh, oh yeah, this whole wall. All that whole wall. Check I mean, it's uh, I literally nowhere else for them to go. They stop here. Here comes another mahi, another one coming in. Where? Here, here, here. Take this, another one's coming in. Hang on. Come over this line. Yeah, no, I saw another one firing in. He's around. All right, now you're, oh, got him on. Oh, nope, he ate it. <laughs> oh, nope, yep, oh. Got him on now. Doubled up. Yeah, well the pocket, this area is known for the pocket, what we call the pocket. It's a distinct feature 
um, that this place has to offer. And it's literally a, a corner. When a certain wind blows, a southeast wind blows, all the wind piles up in one corner. You have a tightly condensed area that holds world-class billfish, so blue marlin, sailfish, white marlin, so all the and mahi, wahoo, there's so much to offer, and it's a short run from Chubke, you know, a 10 mile run, and you're fishing in some of the best bill fishing water in the world. Gosh, it's hard to see in that. I know. Nice. And mahi fishing here is incredible. To come across mahi, I mean, it is a premier destination for big mahi, and this is the time of the year too. With the hard southeast breeze, all of this bait in here, you see a lot of mahi. And when we have them come into the spread, we catch one, we know we're gonna be eating dinner. You know, we didn't bring that much food, so we know we have something to eat for dinner. Oh yeah, a little wahoo. When you have any area where you have shallow water, deep water, and it creates these, these just sheer drops, Wahoo love to sit in those areas. So prime destination for Wahoo. Um, you can come here, you can high speed for them. Um, we're not particularly looking for Wahoo because we're using uh, you know, fluorocarbon leader. Um, but with those circle hooks, those stroke cars, you have the opportunity to just get the hook in the right spot and catch Wahoo. How cool is that? Well, the birds will tell you. The birds are a great indicator, whether you see them with your eye or we're running around looking for them with the, the radar. They're a great tell on what's going on. You know, especially in the Bahamas, birds mean tuna more than anything else. I mean, we go over there just to find birds. Here we go, boys. You can have everything lined up. You find the birds, you find the bait, you find the predators feeding, you get in the right position, the boat's positioned perfectly. You make the perfect oh, cast, yeah. you get the perfect retrieve, you get you the it. hook set. Hey, let me go around you. Yeah, boy. Oh, yeah. Jackson, 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 Jackson. Oh. Ah. I cast it over you, I was trying to. My fault. And the knucklehead in the boat screws it up for you. Jackson's a client of mine. He, you know, moved to my area. It's funny, he moved to my area in Stewart, booked me for charter, had been there a month or so, and it happened to be when I was getting ready to have a party at my house. And he invited us to a Halloween party that he had, and then the rest is kind of history. We became friends from there, and my wife's friends with, with his girlfriend, Heather, and just, uh, it's, it's been, he's kind of taken us under his wing but uh, it's, been, it's been a fun ride so far. And it's funny, that's how fishing is. So many of, of my close friends have come from my days of guiding on the water. Check them out. Two of them. Is that a good one? Oh, yeah. There have to be a certain size, you know, to keep. 
Uh, the flange has to, uh, this flange here has to come out. Like it has to be f like some type of flat. Like see how it's just mm -hmm. sharp there? These are juveniles. It actually turns in. Jimmy runs a boat, a, a buddy's boat. My buddy Philip, he runs his boat uh, offshore and he's the captain for him and that's how we met. Super knowledgeable, knows so much about offshore fishing. I've learned so much from him. I fished in tournaments with him, offshore tournaments. The guy gets on the boat and is upbeat from the minute he gets on the boat and has a positive attitude, always willing to teach. He has that experience that Jackson and I want to obtain. Jackson, pick back up and throw right back in your front. Double up. Jackson, right in the front. Come back. Yeah, such a cool color. Yeah, that electric blue gives them away for the skippy. Good deep drop bait, you said. Oh. Money. <laughs> Stay tight. Stay tight. Nice job, Jackson. Yeah, boy. Let that pen scream. God, they pack a punch for a little, little fish. Bring him over here, Mammy. Oh, he's barely. Bring him over hooked. here, Mammy. He's barely hooked. Hey, keep reading them. Oh, Ripped him a good cool. one. I think it's built for speed. Built for speed. It's like a missile. I love the way you rig these valley here. It's so cool that they're already prepped ready to go for the day of fishing. Not super difficult. You know, the way we rig them, you know, there's no hook in the bait at all. Yeah. So it's completely free swimming from the hook and allows the, the bait to really swim the way it should. So Bill fishing, obviously, we're using circle hooks, yep. uh, 7 trocar circle hook. We're gonna rig a, uh, a swimming valley hoop. Okay, we're gonna start coming through the top of his beak. Right at the hinge little, point of yep, his jaw. Right at the hinge upper, point. Upper jaw. Very crucial point to come straight over the top, dead center that's your pulling point. Pulling it all the way through. Another key point is to, to pull the bottom part of the swivel into the top of his mouth like that. From there we take a, uh, at this point there's a quarter ounce chin weight. It's gonna slide onto the copper. Open his gills a little bit so that'll fit nicely in there. Coming back and around the gill, over the top of the head, and underneath the other gill. So we've got that chin weight locked in there now. Now what we're gonna wanna do is come around and through the eye. It really locks that chin weight. Right, right so right we got the, got the left side, now we're gonna get the right side. Now we're gonna finish it up. We're gonna come around the front of the weight, over the top of the head, through the eye. So right behind the swivel, over the head. Always make sure to, you don't wanna really pull tight, but you wanna make sure it's, it's on there pretty good. So we have an X across the back through the eye, now we're gonna come over the top, creating an X behind the swivel, coming underneath the bill, and now in front of, now this is cinching down his mouth. And we're gonna finish it up by just wrapping nice and tight in front of the bill. Long part of the bill, we're gonna trim that off. And if he's got a wing, like one of his uh, pec fins, we're gonna cut that off as well, because that'll act as a rudder. Okay. And make him spin. Quick snell. Um, I prefer a snell on any circle hooks that I'm doing. Okay. This is the coolest part. No matter the size of the hook, today we're using seven knots, but if we're using a six or an eight, right through and on. And that's all it is. So it allows this to move as free as it wants, swimming, and still it's, it's it. So this is just a six foot section of 50 pound uh, Yozuri leader. Just a simple little loop on the end. 
we have a snap swivel at the end of our main line. Yep. If you have, to, if you get cut off, quick disconnect. If your bait washes out, just pop the bait off. You're ready to go. Simple, simple as that. Yeah, just as easy as it went on. Right back off, and it's it's as quick as it gets. I, I don't know anything quicker in the, especially in the trolling world. That's as easy as. And those Trocar 70s, those things are laser sharp. That's the that's the ticket. Yeah. Forty-seven years of waiting, you're in the prime area to catch a blue marlin. Every time something happens, I don't care if somebody just makes a noise. You, your interest is so sparked, your ears are up like a, a dog just standing guard. That clicker goes off, and your your neck snaps back to where it hurts the next day. Oh, left chain, left chain. That's him. That's him. Pull that chain in. Left chain. Pull it in. Get it in. He's on the right chain. Oh my God. What wow. There he is. Oh, yes. 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 Woo. George, make a turn down C for me. Left turn. Let's clear everything. Hell yeah. Did you what see him bite. crash that what teaser? A yeah. What a bite. You got it, Jackson? Watch your line, Jackson. Hold Watch up, your hold line. Up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Part of you doesn't want to be the guy with the rod in your hand that he hits because there's a lot of pressure there. Everybody's counting on you. Everybody's looking at you for you to perform. So when he hit the rod that and Jimmy was holding it, I felt a sense, a little sense of relief. I mean, 47 years I waited for this and, and Jimmy's holding the rod and I wasn't disappointed. I was like, oh, okay. I got the best guy on it. You know, he's caught more than than all of us combined. So He's the guy to do it. He's the guy to close close the deal, and it was it was pretty sweet to watch. Oh, there he is, jumping out there. There he is. Yeah, boy. I haven't had many opportunities. I don't get a lot of time on the rod. Like when I'm fishing myself, you know, snook fishing back home or messing around, I'm always on the rod. But when it comes to the offshore scene, I've spent most of my career charter fishing, whether it's captaining or even mating. So even mating, I may get to handle the rod for a moment, but I don't actually get to fight them. So the, the, the reeling and the fighting, I still like to be able to do it, to let people know that I can do it, but uh, you know, it's, it's still, it's only a small piece of the whole puzzle. There's our long rigger mark right there. He's not far. He is close, fellas. Safe to swim with him if I jump in? Yeah, you'd be fine. Fo photos or? Absolutely. Well, it's our, my first one to the boat, so I'd love to get some, I'd love to see him in the water too. I think it's. Uh, a different appreciation for the animal, that's yeah. for sure. What are you thinking? I'd say 175. I thought it was a little bigger at the first jump. I think that was the excitement, adding some pounds, which will tend to happen. Coming up, there, there she is, is again. Coming, oh, yeah! Yeah! yeah. Oh, there you go! Wow! That's double line right there. She is right there. Come on, girl, give it to me. We're 15 feet. Keep coming, that's her, I can see her now. That's it, that's it, there we go. There she is. Caught. I, I had it set in my head that the first marlin that I was a part of, I wanted to get in the water with it. And I was, I, I grew up admiring Jose Wahebe. He would always get in the water with, with fish. And I, I love to be in the water. Um, and I just had it set in my head. When I caught one, I wanted to get in there. I wanted to see him in the water and be with him. So Jimmy had the opportunity to reel it in, but I wanted to take that chance. I wanted to take that opportunity to get in the water with this blue marlin. Go. I got her. Hell yeah, look at this. Look at George swim with it. There's a surreal moment where the billfish kind of just looks at you with this massive eye. 
and it, he almost kind of settled down where he realizes that I wasn't something that was there to, to eat him, you know. I don't know what he thought, but he calmed down long enough for me to, to reach down and take that hook out and just swim alongside him for a moment and then just get the relief. You're just in awe. It's a magical moment I've waited a very long time for, and uh, it was definitely a surreal experience. That's the one we wanted. Woo, that's nice and easy with that. Nice job, brother. What are you thinking there, brother? Oh, How was that experience? I've never been in the water with one of those. To, to get in that water and all you see is cobalt blue around you, and that thing is just lit up. Was, was she and looking just, right at you? She just it's looking at me like, who are you? What that are you eyeball? doing here? But you know what? I came up alongside her finally and I took the hook out. She just calmed down and just She, knew, she knew you were there for, for the right I, reasons. I, I pointed her down and worked at her back, dude. Her back was solid. We think that's 200 pound fish. I think just under it, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'd say I, I said 175. It might be, might be a bit more. That's what we came for. That's right, brother. That's what we came for. Right nice there. Nice job, fellas. That was a team effort right there. We couldn't have done it without everybody. That was awesome. Makes it all worthwhile.